time for somebody like you to get rid of these propane tanks. And I think we're going to switch you from propane to natural gas. All right. All right. You already cook with it. You already heat with it inside. Yep. We're going to run a new gas line inside here. But we do have to double check that you have enough capacity at the meter. Oh, okay. I know where that is. All right. All right, so right at the front of your house, you can see the gas line that comes in from the street right here. There's a shutoff valve right here that they can lock if you don't pay your bill. Okay. Gas comes up through this thing called a meter bar right here. Now, these are called out in numbers. This is a 5 light, 10 light, or 15 light. Back when houses used to have gas lights in them. Now, you have electrical lights, right? Yeah, last lights. <laughs> right. So the number that's more important to me is the meter number right here. And that tells me you've got plenty of capacity. Next, I want to check what you've already got connected to this meter inside. Okay. All right, Darren, I think we got good news for you. I've mapped out all your appliances right here, and I now know that we have about 400,000 BTUs of capacity coming through this main line from the meter right outside. If you total up your gas furnace, the water heater, your gas dryer, a fireplace right above us here, and a heater that you have above the garage, it totals about 275,000 BTUs. We got enough capacity. Great news. All right. So the new gas grill wants to go right over here. Here's where your patio is right here. So we need a place to be able to tie in to supply the gas line. So right here is a three quarter inch gas line which goes to that unit heater upstairs. It allows us to tap in right here. And because the gas grill is relatively close, it's only about nine feet and nine feet, we can actually run this smaller size black steel pipe. This is steel pipe that's been cut and threaded. And we'll be able to run this right along here to outside. Now, this is not a do-it-yourself project. You need to be a licensed gas fitter, which I am. So what I did is I brought along my best right-hand person, my son, Evan. Evan, why don't you shut off that gas line, okay? All right, so we need to run our new gas line from right here to the gas grill location. Now, there was a day that we would have cut and thread every single one of these pieces of pipe individually. But now we can buy them in pre-cut lengths. Six foot, five foot, four foot, three foot, and then every single increment down in half inch increments actually down to one inch. Here's all our parts and pieces. We're really gonna build it like an erector set. So now with the gas off, I can actually disconnect this drip cap right here. Might be a little hiss. All right. Ah, oh, I can smell it. Well, actually, you're not actually smelling the gas. You're actually smelling mercaptan, something they add to the gas so you can detect a leak with your nose. Now, all of our connections are going to have pipe joint compound applied to the threads. That's really important. We don't want any leaks. Here's our new T. I'm going to reuse this old drip piece. And one more set of threads right here. So we'll use the same connection method all through our gas piping. Apply the pipe joint compound and tighten up these threads with two wrenches. To support the pipe, I'm going to use threaded rod with galvanized hangers. All right, now we can actually take our first measurement. And you see we need to allow for the threaded piece. That's a four and a half inch piece, Evan. All right, cool. Elbow. Just grab me that wrench too, would you? See if you can catch that up. I like to install a shutoff valve called a gas cock, both inside and outside for safety. Darren, before we run any more pipe inside, I got to figure out where I'm actually piping to. So I got to drill a hole through your house. Now I have measured about four times 
from a reference point and it tells me that right about here should be perfect for this way. And I'm looking at 27 is what I think will be perfect. So, you feeling lucky? I'm feeling lucky. Okay. All right. So there is our hole. Hey, right where I want it to be. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to stick this piece of pipe through as a gunner. Just let's take a measurement. What do you got? 60. Nice. Exactly 60? Yep. Ooh, Five boy. Feet. Perfect. All right, so it's a good practice to install this T-fitting right here with this leg right here with a cap. It's called a drip. And that's to have a place to catch any rust or any water that might be in the gas so it can settle here and not block the pipe. All right, so I've got most of the connections done out here. Here's a secondary shutoff outside. And this is actually a tester. I'm going to actually pump up all that new piping to about three pounds of pressure and close it off right there and see if it holds. Inside, I like to be double sure that there's no leaks and do a soap test. If there's any leak, a big bubble will show up. Looks like we're good. All right, it's been about 40 minutes and our dial is right where it should be, right at three. If there had been a leak, that dial would have dropped and dropped and dropped and finally gone to zero. So now we can break this off. I'm going to install this fitting right here. It's pretty ingenious. It's actually a connector, a snap connector for your hose on your grill. You pull this back, the hose engages and locks in. It's only going to let gas come in if the hose is engaged. That's good for safety. Absolutely. To make sure this steel pipe doesn't rust, it's good practice and code to spray paint it with a rust-proof paint. So what do you think? Your new gas grill designed to burn with natural gas this time. It has a hose in the back right here. And that is a connection made to snap right into here. All right, so just need to turn the gas back on and we'll be cooking. Good deal. Well, the gas is back on and you didn't waste a minute getting this thing fired up. We're up to what, almost 600 degrees? Well, it's almost lunchtime. How about a hot dog? Hot dog? Well, you know what? I've been eyeing that pool. Why don't you cook me a hot dog and send it to me out by the pool? Thank you very much, Richard. All right, mustard and relish. <laughs> <laughs> so, Richard, he got himself a brand new grill, one that was set up to work with natural gas. Yep. You couldn't convert the old grill? Most gas appliances, you can switch from propane to natural or natural to propane. What you have to do is to change a thing called the orifice. If this was the tube coming down to the burner, down inside is this little tiny part right here. And this has the smallest of holes. They're different between natural and propane, so these have to be switched. But this guy was really hot for a brand new grill, so he went out and got one natural. Now, you needed a 60-inch link, and you had a pipe that was 60 inches. I got really lucky. What do you do if it's 59? Well, you build it. 48 and a coupling and then 10 and a half. So there was always two choices we had. One is to build it the way I did it there, or the other was to bring 21 foot long pieces of pipe, cut them, on site thread them using a thing called a power drive and a pipe die, and we would cut these threads. I've seen it done many times on the job site. It's messy, <laughs> it's time consuming, and it's expensive. It is expensive. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about a new connection method. Instead of having to cut these threads, this requires no threads. I measure the pipe where I want it, I cut it. And here's the raw end. And now what I want to do is to use this compression connection right here. If you look inside, see that little yellow uh, O-ring in there, mm -hmm. the seal? That makes a seal that's tight against the outside of the pipe. There's barbed tabs right here that are going to squeeze down onto the pipe. Right. So what you do is you want to prep this pipe. You use this deburring tool, and you spin it so it just took the edge off here. See the sander in here? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that would sand the outside until it looks like this. And once you do, you bring it in like this. Tommy, just grab that tool. This is a special tool with these incredibly strong jaws. Go ahead. That connection's made and will never leak. I love that. Isn't that something? 
That's fast. All right. Well, Richard, you're always bringing us something new. Thank Trying you. Trying to. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Richard Thewey. I'm Tom Silva. And I'm Roger Cook. For Ask This Old House. Did I see that guy making pancakes on a grill? <laughs> yeah, that's right. They must have been frozen. <laughs> Can you cook pancakes on propane? Thank you.